Welcome to the Gear Vlogs Car Talk Automotive Podcast. Season 3, Episode 8. Uh, nobody is in the live chat of um, Clubhouse as I'm broadcasting this. So if you want to uh, be a participant in the live conversations of the various car topic to- stories that I bring up today or any other stories in the future, um, feel free to join me on Clubhouse. Link to the Clubhouse. Uh, my account on Clubhouse will be in the show descriptions. And uh, yeah, just uh, the only thing right now is trying to solidify a time where I can optimize where most of the people, um, you, the listeners and viewers can, uh, catch the show. So yeah, that's the biggest challenge for our content creator is knowing when your audience will be available to, uh, listen to you. So yeah, I'll have a poll question or leave a comment down below. If, um, you uh best time you'd like to be able to catch a show so I can get a poll everybody and figure out the averages of who uh all wants to uh attend the show and participate so yeah um uh, that's about it if you're here listening to this on one of the other platforms during one of the uh replays or re-uploads as this show is being recorded as live as we speak right now. Um, thanks for joining me, and if you can do me a favor, give me a follow. Uh, if uh, you like this show, give it a like, and uh, be sure to share and comment down below. You know, uh, only way I can grow this uh, podcast is by uh, you, the listeners, and your participation and support. And appreciate it. Um, yeah, so let's get into the uh, first um, story. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. One second. One, two. Okay, let's move on to the first story. First story we've got. GM... Uh, 2024 GMC Hummer EV SUV Edition 1 back on the market after charity auction. It sold for 500000 at Bear Jackson Scottsdale last month. And uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at you know, pictures of it. Yeah, very interesting design. Yeah. Still a little square body for my tastes, but... Uh, that's the uh, nature, I think, the Hummers, you know, it's like, mm. you know, if you've ever driven one, it seems like it's just basically you're driving a big square, at least that's my uh, recollection of the H2s uh, when I drove one. Um, also got complaints from one client who told me he got a bunch of wind noise. Not sure if it was because of the fact he had an aftermarket windshield installed or... It was a design deal since I was the only H2 I've ever driven, so I can never pinpoint any air leaks or anything like that, so take it with a grain of salt. But overall, I'm impressed with uh, what GM is able, to, or GMC, has been able to accomplish with uh, this truck and what's its capabilities. So more to it. So let's get into the story a little bit. The charity auction at this year's uh, Barry Jackson event in Arizona polled in the usual millions for good causes. Nevertheless, there were no shocking results among the sales like the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette VIN 1 that hammered in 3.7 million in 2022 or the GM or the 2022 GMC Hummer EV pickup VIN 1 that hammered for 2.5 million in 2021. In fact, the best results for Hummer are for ham. Hummer prices this year are Hummer. Uh, that doesn't make sense if it's Hummer or Hammer. Prices this year was the GMC 
Hummer EV SUV one SUV VIN one um, that brought in 500,000 quite a ways down on its bedded siblings it seems the prices decides a little bit of battery electric arbitrage arbitrage might be the play because the SUV is going back up for sale as caught by car buzz. A new member of the Hummer chat forum stated in a, in a thread, Barry Jackson VIN 1 SUV available. Hmm. According to the poster who calls himself Bill, <laughs> tread lightly, the charity organization that the funds went to aligns well with our company and we are were excited to participate with them. However, the Hummer should go to a true enthusiast or collector. The post says Barry Jackson is interested in putting the Hummer in front of audiences at the Palm Beach auction event April 13th to the 15th or at the Vegas event June 22nd or the 24th. Hmm. So they're not sure. It sounds like they're not sure if it's going to get any higher dollars if it gets, you know, re-auctioned. So take it for what you will. Uh, let's go read on further. The vehicle apparently built and will be titled in Arizona. It's a loaded edition one in a moonshot green mat with a lunar shadow interior and three motors making roughly 830 horsepower. There is transparent sky panels that open to create an open air infinity roof, 14 speaker Bose audio, super cruise, crab walk, and lots of freedom mode. Naturally, the seller is willing to part with this bit of history before April and at first said he is ready to consider a reasonable offer for the vehicle. We're not sure if that means more than 500000 if so, or without the charity component. The reason these vehicles bring in so much money so often we suspect such as asking price would be a tough draw. A look at car and bids results for a Hummer EV pickup truck in addition to one trim shows prices that roughly surpassed 200000 Last summer are down to around 160000 However, two posts later, Bill says his company is open to all offers. Interesting. That's all I got to say on that one. Um... Yeah. Comment down below what you guys uh, think. If you guys would uh, consider bidding on it or not. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah, that story. And obviously we got nobody in the clubhouse yet. So, boo-hoo. Uh, let's move on to the next story. Let's see. 2024 Chevy Blazer EV spotted undisguised for the first time. Ooh. The 2024 Chevy Blazer EV is set to go on sale later this year as GM expands its lineup of fully electric vehicles. After months of anticipation, we are finally seeing the first images of the mid-sized electric crossover without camo for the first time. General Motors has been teasing fans with the promise of an all-electric blazer since it was first announced at the automaker's CES presentation last January. Despite the Silverado EV receiving all of the attention at the time, GM CEO Mary Barra left fans with a Steve Jobs-like one-last-thing moment revealing plans to introduce an all-electric version of the consumer favorite Blazer SUV. Barra confirmed the Blazer EV would arrive as a 2024 model in a Twitter post. 
last year with sales beginning in spring of 2023. When the 2024 Chevy Blazer was officially revealed in January 2022, GM confirmed it would arrive in four trims, one LT, two LT, RS, and SS, plus an additional police pursuit vehicle addition. Although not priced as low as the Chevy Equinox EV, starting at around thirty thousand, the Blazer EV is priced between forty four nine ninety five for the L one LT to sixty five thousand nine ninety five for the SS. Based on GM's Ultimum platform, the midsize electric e SUV features estimated range between two hundred forty seven miles, the one LT to three hundred twenty miles. On the RS. Hmm. Let's see. First images of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV surface. First images of the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV undisguised surfaced online over the weekend ahead of sales beginning this summer. A slight delay to what Barra claimed in her tweet. Reddit user Skydoor14 posted images alongside the caption. Saw some new and upcoming EVs over the weekend. Chevy Blazer, Nissan Araya, and Chevy Silverado EV. Hmm. Interesting if he got, this gentleman got all three of them. Is GM working or partnering with Nissan? Is there some kind of technology uh, partnership going on that we don't know about? Food for thought. Let's uh, keep going. From the images, it appears to be the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV1 2LT trim sporting with summit white exterior color. The production model looks very similar to the concept model, which is uncommon nowadays. The first Chevy Blazer EV trim to go on sale will be the 2LT at 47595 and the RS at 51995 this summer, followed by the SS at 65995 later in 2023, and the 1LT at 44995 and the PPV, our police pursuit vehicle, the first quarter of 2024. Chevy's electric blazer is expected to play a pivotal role in GM's transformation to an all-electric future by providing EVs for everyone. Now, that's all said and good. Um, but comment down below. Is your, let's say, just for the PPV police pursuit vehicles, if you're a local law enforcement agencies were to spec these out one does your jurisdiction your locale even have the capacity to or the infrastructure to be able to set up charging stations no hey Tariq uh, let me hey Tariq uh, see you online um if you want to come up, just raise your hand. Um, just talking about a um, Chevrolet or GM uh, releasing the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV was spotted uncamouflaged, so they're gearing, gearing up to unrelease it. And I was posing a question to the audience members. Um, do you think you're, if you're local, because... Chevy's planning to offer a police version of this EV Blazer for law enforcement purposes. Now, if your lo local law enforcement were to place orders for these things, do your local community or your police, you know, your local city or government, do you believe that they have the infrastructure to support a fleet of these vehicles? And my opinion, personally, I don't think we don't have enough of the infrastructure in place yet for that. But that's my, my personal opinion. 
even though like out here in California they're pushing by 2035 no new gasoline sales and all electric vehicles and yet we don't have the power infrastructure to even support going all fully electric so it's like I just don't see it maybe another 20 or 30 years we might have the infrastructure in my opinion at least for here in California but I don't know. That's why I wanted to leave it out there for comments for people who want to uh, chime in. So if you'd like, raise your hand if you'd like to come on stage and give some feedback. Um, if not, I will move on to the next show or topic. And I'll, uh, yeah, just raise your hand if you want to come up on stage. Um, yep. Next story will be, let's go on to, this will be a story on Tesla. And here we go. Yep. Tesla overtakes Ford in U.S. brand loyalty award for the first time. GM and Tesla are the big winners in the 2022 Automotive Loyalty Awards, with Tesla topping Ford for U.S. brand loyalty for the first time, S&P Global Mobility said. Uh, let's continue reading the story here. General Motors and Tesla are the big winners in the 2022 Automotive Loyalty Awards, with Tesla topping Ford for their... U.S. brand loyalty for the first time, S&P Global Mobility said Monday. Despite a three-year industry-wide drop in customer loyalty, GM managed to win the overall loyalty to manufacturer award for the eighth straight year. Industry-wide shortages have caused customers to shop for other brands promoting industry averages Loyalties to drop from 54.6% .6 in 2019 to 50.2% in 2022. GM sees a constant demand for its SUVs and pickups as inventory levels rise, S&P Global Mobility said in a statement. The past three years have been a challenge for automotive industry. Joe... La fear of uh, S&P Global Mobility president said in a statement, as consumers are returning back to market post-pandemic and inventory levels have slowly improved from last year's lows, retaining loyalty customers has been more challenging than ever before. Shortages have impacted domestic manufacturing this year, particularly Ford Motor Company. Well, duh. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Tesla wins for overall loyalty to make marks the first year in the last decade that Ford has not won the award, says S&P Global Mobility Production Manager. Ford won the award in 2021 for its 12th consecutive year, powered by its consumer long-standing alliances to the F-Series trucks. And then we have some uh, here, if you're catching the visual version of the uh, podcast, we got some graphs we're looking at here. Manufacturer and Make Loyalty Awards. Overall loyalty to manufacturer went to GM. Overall loyalty to Make went to Tesla. Essex market loyalty went to make went to Tesla. Most improved make loyalty went to Tesla. Overall loyalty to dealer Subaru. Highest conquest percentage Tesla. Alternative powertrain loyalty to make Tesla. Most improved alternative powertrain to loyalty to make Mercedes Benz. Interesting. And segment model loyalties goes on to small utility, went to Chevrolet Equinox. Mid-size utility went to Subaru Outback. Full-size utility went to Chevrolet Tahoe. Mid-size pickup went to Honda Ridgeline. Light-duty pickup went to the Ford F-Series. 
heavy duty pickup went to the Chevy Silverado 2500 and yeah 2500 van went to Mercedes Sprinter sports car went to the Dodge Challenger small car went to the Chevy Bolt large car went to the Nissan Altima luxury small SUV went to the Tesla Model Y luxury mid-size utility went to the Lincoln Nautilus let's see luxury full-size utility went to Land, Land Rover Land Rover Range Rover yeah that's a mouthful luxury sports car went to Chevrolet Corvette luxury small car went to Tesla Model 3 luxury mid-size car went to the Lexus ES luxury full-size car went to Mercedes-Benz S-Class so Tesla's brand resonance with Ethics Consumer drove its loyalty, numbers, and diversity retention, S&P Global mentioned. Ethic buyers have increased their market share in the industry every year for the last decade, making them an important audience in building loyalty success for the foreseeable future. Hmm, interesting. Ethics consumers comprise 40% of the personal vehicle registration in 2022, adding to its importance in the loyalty award program. A report said Tesla won this year's ethics market loyalty to make award with 52% of their loyal volume coming from ethic consumers. Elon Musk automaker also scored repeat wins for highest conquered percentage in alternative powertrain loyalty to make. It won most improved loyalty to make and two segment models loyalty awards for the Tesla Model 3 sedan and the Tesla Model Y crossover. So yay. So yeah, that's the uh, just of what we have for uh, that story. Woohoo. Yeah, well, last news story is like a throwaway story, but we will see here. Um, no reserve for a Ferrari F40 wire sculpture. And basically, we have a picture here is a uh, looks like a one to one scale version of the uh, a Ferrari F40 done in the uh, wire or piping. This wire sculpture was constructed to resemble a Ferrari F40 and was purchased by the seller out of a out of Germany in 2019. The sculpture is constructed from red painted wire and can be mounted both horizontally and vertically. The seller reports that it weighs approximately 31 pounds and measures 55 inches long, 25 inches wide, 13 inches tall, this F40 style sculpture is now offered at no reserve in Napa, California on a bill of sale. Hmm. Napa. Maybe I should go check it out. I wonder uh, what the uh, asking price is. I know a certain gentleman, uh, automotive YouTuber in Utah, that uh, may find this of use for him in uh, his new house build. Comment down below if you think who uh, that automotive YouTuber is. And, uh, yeah, in the comments. The Ferrari F40 was designed by Petro Carmadella under Aldo Brovarano at Penoferina and was produced from 1987 to 1992. It was the last production to be developed and launched under Fer Enzo Ferrari's leadership and was the fastest and most powerful Ferrari built to date. This sculpture is constructed from red painted wire and weighs approximately 31 pounds. It measures 55, yeah, we already got that. Flat metal panels are in place in the areas 
of the flip up headlights and false five spoke wheels. The sculpture can be displayed both horizontally and vertically. So yeah, it's on a bid right now. Whether it's sold or not, I do not know. Currently, it's at a bid. Oh, yeah, because this is an auction site of uh, bringatrailer.com. Currently, it's at being bid at $2,750. Currently, it ends in three days, the auction. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, there we go on that story. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on to, uh, well... Brief um, message from one of our sponsors, namely me. Um, so bear with me. Hey, I want to take a moment to uh, introduce you and let you guys know about uh, our Amazon storefront that uh, I have. Um, by having the storefront, it's one additional way for me to earn commissions on products I recommend and you know, introduce to you, my viewers, that uh, goes towards help supporting the uh, channel for various operating costs. Be it my ISP, paying for, paying for my ISP to equipment and gear and products to purchase for future reviews. Um, yeah, so I'll have a link in the video description where you can check out the storefront. And if there's something that in particular that you want, um, and you want to support the channel that you, you're going to be ordering from Amazon anyway, um, reach out to me via DMs on Instagram or, you know, via, you know, email to uh, contact me with a particular product that you're interested in uh, ordering from Amazon. And I can generate a, an affiliate link for you to where it doesn't cost you anything. You can use that affiliate affiliate link, and uh, you make the purchase. And in one small way, doesn't cost you anything outside of what you already spend money on to uh, help purchase uh, and support um, us here at uh, Gear Vlogs through the uh, Amazon uh, affiliate program. So, yeah, thanks for this, uh, taking this moment, and back to the show. Thanks, Mario. So, first story we have here is uh, from TJ Hunt. Um, he talks basically on this video. Uh, he gets a new retired NASCAR hauler use um, for his uh, efforts in 2023, his uh, racing and show efforts uh, this year. So, and that's made due to, I think, a partnership with Magnaflow. So, essentially, they got one of their motorsport trailers that they were using. Um, it's an older trailer, but it's uh, what they get to use. So that's a plus. So hey, way to go. Um, yeah, link to that story will be in the uh, show notes. And uh, whatnot. Yeah. So let's move on to the next story. Next story comes from DDE. Um, basically, in this particular story, he finally takes delivery of a, well, a V12 uh, car that he's going to be uh, essentially repairing. Um, I guess apparently it's been uh, wrecked for over a year now, and he's finally going to bite the bullet. Instead of having a professional shop rebuild it, he's going to try to redo the repairs. On his channel so hey more props to him so all I could say on that one and then let's see following up then he does the reveal of a Ken Block tribute livery of a build that um, he did for obviously since the passing of Ken Block he decided to dedicate to a tribute build to him and uh, definitely worth checking out that build 
Yeah, definitely on that one. Um, so yeah, move on to the next story. Let's see. And and last story here for the day will be from Drag Times. He basically goes over about how GM has the deal with the strict restrictions that they put in place if you are a purchaser of a new Corvette Z06 and if you decide to sell it before owning it six months, you lose the warranty. But the com comparison or what drag time brings up is the fact that this is a car dealership that has a brand new convertible Z06 and they're auctioning it off. So he brought up, uh, drag time brought up some good points. He goes, in comparison to what other manufacturers are doing. So it's like, I understand that they are trying the idea of they don't want the regular consumer from getting acquiring these cars and then flipping them as soon as they get them. I understand that. But the point he makes here is okay, but this car dealership puts up the car for auction. Obviously they got it as part of their inventory. They decide they're gonna auction it off. So they can get whatever they want for it via the auction price, but they state in the auction that whoever the buyer is, they can't, you know, turn around and sell it for at least six months. So they have to hold on to it. So the, if the idea was to keep people from flipping cars, shouldn't that apply to dealerships too? Yeah, that's a comment down below. And... You know, Drag Times also brings up about some other agreements that he's had with other manufacturers because he's he's got a vast car collection with Ferrari, uh, Lamborghini, and but in Ferrari in particular, you know they got some you know restrictions where it can be you have to hold on to a car for a year or in some cases eighteen months. And he explains here on one car that he had that if he had violated the agreement that he had with Ferrari. He could have easily doubled or tripled his price at the time of what he paid for the car. But as a, he, being a loyal Ferrari customer, held on to the car and, you know, he'll be lucky if he can maybe make a $100,000 profit of what he had spent for that particular car. But the thing he didn't mention in the article or in his video, yeah, Ferrari also looks at it that it is they want people return repeat customers. And so he's what he's doing is trying to stay in the good graces of Ferrari. So, and I'm surprised he didn't mention that, you know, Ferrari would like to get first offer to uh, sell the car, or, you know, buy the car back so they could sell it off to somebody else. So, and it goes on to... There's another article that somebody had mentioned uh, ways of getting on a manufacturer's good graces on these specialty car makes and whatnot. I'll ch might do a dedicated video on that one, but eh, there is you know that there was that aspect. So, um, yeah. So there we have it, and. Uh, if um, let's see. So yeah, if this is your uh, first time, please uh, consider giving a like, follow, share of this video, and uh, there we go.